Hi, I'm Patrick Dunnikin. At Gibbons, we believe that citizens need to be informed about the complex issues that affect their lives. That's why we're proud to support the programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. The Future of Cancer Care, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, Health First New Jersey, PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. Roche, Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868. The Russell Berry Foundation, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship. And by Investors Bank. Welcome to Caucus, I'm Steve Adubato. 40% of those born today will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. But treatments are dramatically improving and patients are living much longer. Here to discuss this very important topic are Anne Van Meerbeck, who is Clinical Nutrition Manager at Sodexo, Dr. Andre Gua, Chairman and Executive Director of the John Thayer Cancer Center at the Hackensack University Medical Center, Doris Dowdy, Volunteer Patient Navigator with the American Cancer Society, and finally, Kathy Graff is a nine-year cancer survivor. I want to thank you all for joining us. Please, throughout this program, uh, log on to the website, get important information. Uh, doctor, let me turn to you. Uh, dramatic improvements over the last, I'd say, five to 10 years in cancer care? Yeah, there's been a clear improvement in survival of, um, of cancer care and outcome and, and, and survival of patients. And there's, and there's a lot of reason to be, continue to be very optimistic as we understand better make a lot of progress in the biology of cancer. We also have an unprecedented, unprecedented number of novel therapies that show remarkable activity in subset of patients and will continue to help uh, fight the disease and improve our patient's outcome. Is it certain cancers that have made greater progress than others? And if so, what are they? There's only some differences among the cancers, but if you look at just lymphoma, uh, which is, we know, a very heterogeneous disease with many, many different subtypes, at least 65 different subtypes of lymphomas. There were some lymphomas that were, for which the survival was, the median survival was in a range of two, two and a half years. And we're now in a range of five to seven years within two decades for this very challenging lymphoma, thanks to the fact that we treat it more aggressively, but also we have a lot of novel therapy in a relapse setting that allow patients who become resistant to chemotherapy to continue to have prolonged response duration. So there's only differences among the cancers, but a remarkable improvement mm -hmm. across the board. And I imagine a big part of this is, is patient information. Um, it's very important for patients to be more actively involved in their own care, right? So let's talk about the, the, the whole question of um, patient navigators. First of all, what is a patient navigator? Basically what we do is we, once the patient has been diagnosed with cancer, we normally go and speak with the patient one-on-one -on -one in regards to the different resources and programs that are offered through the American Cancer Society. So a lot of times it means going up, sitting with the patient, listening to them, and definitely showing compassion so that we can determine what that patient's needs are. Uh, with the American Cancer Society, what we do is a lot of times with the patients, they want additional information on the type of cancer that they do have. We're able to go down to our resource center and bring mm. that information up to them or guide them there. We also explain to them um, that there are programs that can assist them in regards to getting them back and forth to treatment. We offer free transportation to those patients. But patients have to be advocates for themselves. You've been an advocate for yourself. Very much so. Very Describe much so. your very fascinating journey. Oh, well. Um, 30, 30 seconds or less. <laughs> yeah. I'm joking. Um, 50 rounds of. Uh, 50, describe 50 what? Is it clinical trials? Is it treatments or what? Some of it was a protocol, regular protocols, and many were clinical trials. I think four Over how many clinical, years? Nine. Diagnosed with? 
non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay. Yeah. The original diagnosis was? Um, just follicular non-Hodgkin's. Follicular non lymphoma. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, follicular. Okay, the prognosis. Uh, there was no cure. That was one of the things that bothered me. <clears throat> but um, over the years, I've had lots of treatments, many of which um, gave me a little extra time until the next clinical trial, and we went through them. And um, finally, Dr. Gua and I decided that, you know, I was young and healthy and very willing and wanting to live, so we elected to have a stem cell transplant. So just a year ago, I had a stem cell transplant, and just a couple of days ago, I had a scan that was perfectly clean. So I like to think of myself now as a cancer-free person for the wow. first time in nine years. So Congratulations. Thank you. And, and the fact that you look really uh, healthy. By the way, do you work out? I do. I'm an avid, <laughs> avid triathlete, marathon runner, um, and was so through the entire time until this, this last year I had had to really be put on hold with the transplant because I was in and out of the hospital and, you know, lost weight. And But I'm on the road back now. So Look at you. I'm really looking forward to getting strong again. Being physically fit, the nutrition piece as well, all part of it, right? Talk it certainly that. is. A lot of people like to think there's a diet for cancer prevention. There really isn't. It's about lifestyle changes over, over the course of a lifetime. A lot of um, uh, survivors, when they're diagnosed with a disease, the first thing they want to do is change their diet, start an exercise plan, give up refined um, sugar, and, and start on this journey. And it's a very hard thing to do, um, as me and Kathy spoke. It's a hard thing to do when you're diagnosed and you're going through chemo and radiation to eat healthy and to be strong and to exercise. So what do you say? I mean, she was I doing say, all these things I, She was doing them before. Mm -hmm. she, Kathy was doing them before, you know, which makes her an, an exceptional candidate. But most of the cancer survivors are not, they don't have that course of, of action and they don't have those lifestyle modifications. So I tell, <coughs> pa I tell my patients, whatever gets you through the treatment, you want to get through the treatment, you want to be well hydrated, you want, and when you're post, you know, post-treatment, then we can talk about lifestyle modifications for the re remainder of your life. Mm. You know, but exercise and good, I, healthy I, eating. The good thing with Kathy, I didn't have to do my spiel. Usually I talk about <laughs> the size and, right. you know, being, uh, being fit and healthy, and then she was, I had to slow her down, actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, it you was... You do have a spiel, though. It was, oh, I, every time what I... What is your spiel? It, every time I see a patient, I, I am totally convinced there's actually extensive literature now and clinical trials that have shown that being physically active, trying to eat mm -hmm. healthier and all that, I believe it, it's, a, it's a double winner. It helps patients take a course of action, do something when you're diagnosed, and being proactive and do something. Adjust that pure benefit. But also that's a short term, but also long term benefit, feeling higher energy, better recovery from the chemotherapy. There is data that actually suggests that uh, yeah, there's less recurrence in breast cancer and prostate cancer depending on the body mass index and we strongly believe that this is really important to help patients going through the chemotherapy again recover potentially recovering a better immune system but we we are so convinced that in our cancer center we actually have a cooking studio where we have a cooking studio. A cooking studio where we invite chefs from outside and we have our nutritionists who actually teach patients on how to cook healthy you know when you get cancer you don't have the same appetite and all that to try to make them want to play again with food and then try to do something and being proactive. And then I am totally convinced that this is a really important part of what we do. Talk about that. I, I will say when I was first diagnosed, <clears throat> I can remember the day so vividly and sitting there and saying to myself, you know, I have the option here to surrender to this disease or right, stand up and really do everything I can to walk the walk with some grace and integrity and fight it till the bitter end. And I know that I believe in my heart very strongly that the reason why I'm here today is because I kept my level of fitness and my nutrition and good rest and never mind amazing doctors and uh, you know facility and healthcare workers that helped me through it. What about the the integrity? Uh, help me understand that. Well, um, what does that mean? I think that there it's it can be very challenging psychologically and emotionally to go through this disease, and I think that you know, people always ask, what is it like? And I don't think anybody in their right mind would sign up for cancer, but I must tell you, if I could take the piece away that it was difficult for my family and my loved ones to watch me go through this, um, I can honestly say I might continue to sign up for this because what I've gotten out of it as a person and what it's forced me to do to go within myself to learn about 
my integrity, my resilience, my strength, my courage, my tenacity, all of those things you know that you may think you have, you learn very quickly how much you have within yourself to continue the fight. And I, you know, I just wanted to live and to walk the walk with integrity. I'm a high school teacher. I felt like this was a major impact on their lives over the last nine years. And if I was going to do this, I was going to do this in a way that I was very proud of. And, and I, I have to say, I really am very proud of the effect that I've had in a positive way on a lot of young people. Um, before I move off this part of the conversation, is that why you told our producers in a pre-interview to get ready for this program that cancer is a gift? Because cancer has been a gift. Is that it a, a misstatement? No. <laughs> Absolutely not a misstatement. I've thought very long and very hard about this. And um, when I tell you that I would sign up for this again, I would. It's been very difficult physically and, and emotionally and psychologically. But the people I've met, first of all, that gift is one that you know I will never forget. And it has provided me with a new insight into who I am. And I think that having gone through this challenge has provided me with a better knowing of mm -hmm. the person that I am and the gifts that I'm able to give to other people. So I feel very strongly that it's been a, a very good process for me. Uh, I, I find it very inspiring. That obviously, I, I <coughs> witnessed the, the whole story and the whole treatment of Kathy, and I find it very inspiring. And sometimes I actually pull her I mean, uh, I, and, ask, and give her phone number to another patient who is just newly diagnosed. So she tried to give them sort of a you know, another person to talk about it, giving tips about on how to handle it, on things and to change in your life. And there's no better person to talk about it than someone who obviously has gone through it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important we create a community where they're helping each other and that's very, very meaningful for patients. And we see that when we do our annual cancer survivors mm -hmm. event under Statue of Liberty, we had more than 4,000 patients with Aretha Franklin this year. And it was spectacular, Aretha Franklin, Aretha Franklin. Franklin. it mm -hmm. was spectacular to see the enthusiasm of the patients coming to this mm -hmm. event. And I think it creates a community where patients help each other, encourage each other, wow. inspire each other, and it really helps. Yeah. I, I think when you're, when you're dealing with patients also, patients learn from each other. I learn from my patients. I know most of, I, I mean, you have a good basis in your, in your education, but you learn how to deal with patients based on dealing with patients and how they deal with each other, and that's how they get through it. But you know, beyond all the clinical research, uh, pieces of this, the, the technological pieces, the, the parts of science that uh, we hope and pray for the progress, right? Mm -hmm. That I started out this uh, program with asking you about the advancements. I imagine that there are people that have just listened to what Kathy had to say um, about her own journey for nine years. Uh, she'd do it again, go on the journey again, and, um, and, and there are folks who either have or are dealing with cancer or, or or family members of survivors are saying, you're kidding me, right? Like, I, or I want to be like her. Is, that, is this incredibly rare, what you're hearing right now? I, I don't think so. You I don't. think that there's a lot of cancer survivors that feel the exact same way. And, and part of it is what they offer for the next person that has to go through it. And it's very hard, I think, for, for survivors to go through the process and to manipulate insurance and to deal with treatments and side effects. And it's not so much the cancer, it's all the things that go with it. And for caregivers, it's, it, it's their sense of loss of a loved one. Yeah, speaking of uh, caregivers, Doris, you dealt with this personally? Yes, I have. With your mom? Yes, I lost my mother two years ago to breast cancer. And during that time, the one thing that I learned with the facility that we were in, looking at the fact that the compassion, the way that they went ahead, that they treated both her and my father, who had a lot of questions, it opened a lot inside of myself and my family. And that's one of the reasons why I chose to come back to volunteer with the American Cancer Society. As a navigator. And I wanted to be able to come back and give back what they had Is given us. And I'm happy that I did. And it's one thing that I want to continue to do. So let me ask Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, that's great. How important is oh, this it's part of the doctor? Extremely critical. Extremely critical. And then, again, cancer is a transforming, life transforming experience for patients, for caregivers, for families, as mm -hmm. Kathy mentioned. So it's a teamwork. It's a teamwork at home. It's a teamwork with your friends. I mean, uh, new media helps a lot. I mean, there's chat room. I mean, people, I mean, really communicate a lot. 
we, you know, we had symposium where we had 200 patients and on the symposium for teaching in the cancer center, and we had thousands on Facebook following from around the world who don't have access necessarily to the same information. So it's social really, media is a big Social part. media. Mm -hmm. And it's really exciting to see that everyone gets together to try to get better. But back to the question that you had in terms of all this is really positive, but on top of that, this, it wakes me up at night, I say that literally, that the progress in oncology is so exciting what's happening. We have unprecedented um, novel therapies that have amazing activity that are transforming some cancers that we are very difficult to treat, and that's really exciting. We're going to have some cancers that will become chronic disease by taking a pill at home and suppress the tumor, and this is already the case for a very difficult form of leukemia called CML, chronic myeloid leukemia, where patients have remained on kinase inhibitors now for more than 10 years and without any major side effects. So this is really exciting. We have a number of novel therapy. We understand better can, can, cancer. And w the goal is to try to match all these novel therapies that are targeted therapies. So they focus on the defect <coughs> in the cell with the, the <coughs> genetic makeup of those tumors because patients are very different from one to the other to develop what's really the ultimate goal of precision medicine. Is, and that, is that, excuse me for interrupting, doctor. I want to get the terms here right. Is this what is referred to as precision medicine? Precision medicine, yes. It's really critical that to try to pinpoint what are the key factors, abnormal genetic mistakes on those cancer cells that could be potentially a weak link in this tumor cell, and we could actually use this as an opportunity to target therapy and combine targeted therapy in the future to try to give treatment that have less toxicity because they're going to be much more targeted. So it's really exciting time in oncology. That's really important. Um, and by the way, um, clinical trials have been referred to several times throughout this program. By the way, log on to the website, get important information. You see it right there, the John Thera Cancer Center. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just dealing with some respiratory stuff. Um, significant progress in clinical trials as well, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of confusion about that. People say, hey, how do I get in one? It's not that easy. You're exactly right. Clinical trial has sort of a multiple facet to it. I mean, some people think that, oh, gee, they're talking about clinical trial. That means things are really bad. Or clinical trial is, I'm, you know, I'm a guinea pig. Or clinical trials have sometimes a bad rep. True, because but this is not the case. Obviously, we have so many novel options, and now we have clinical trial moving forward that we're going to have a rationale, a reason, because of those tumor cells that I mentioned, defect that we're going to be able to pick a trial better over one another. So we have now more than 200 clinical trials in our, um, in our cancer center, and it's amazing to see the benefit of some of these trials in patients who actually could, um, listeners or viewers that can be today with us, uh, you know, when someone is not doing well with standard chemotherapy, it's very important to look at all options because there are so many, so much progress very quickly that can certainly affect patients' outcome. And you, clinical trials, many? Um, four. Four. Mm -hmm. Four. And again, I imagine that's important for people to understand as well. Mm -hmm. And we also have information in our resource center. That's another thing that if anyone ever wants to come into the resource center we have. The American Cancer Society. Yes, we have information that they can read up on in regards to clinical trials. A couple more things I want to get out there. I want to make sure we, we cover these bases. Um, it's interesting about chemo and radiation. And I know I first was someone talking the other day and as I was listening to them talking, it was clear to me they didn't know the difference. People use those terms interchangeably very often without knowing which one is which. I mean, my point is, um, did you do both? No, I've never had radiation, but plenty of chemo. Is, is radiation not as invasive? I, I know that's not probably the best way to ask it. No, no, it. it's, it's, it's actually it's important to clarify. Chemotherapy is a chemical compound, a mm, drug, that is given intravenously or orally that goes into the entire body, obviously, once it's absorbed or injected, and will kill the cells where they are. Radiation is a physical treatment using x-rays with a beam that will focus specifically on one area. So we deliver better radiation. We have better ways to deliver radiation because, by definition, it would be impossible to irradiate the entire body. So we radiate some areas of the body where there's a leftover of a tumor, right. where there's a complication, a side that has not responded to chemotherapy, or brain meds where the chemotherapy does not penetrate. So those are two different treatments but are very often used in combination and um, together. And I have to ask you, there are issues, you mentioned um, there are two things here. One is the immune system I'm curious about. Mm -hmm. 
To what degree is the immune system, Anne, impacted by radiation chemotherapy? The immune system is, is always impacted by chemotherapy and radiation because, um, because you know, our cells become unstable and, um, and that affects the whole entire body. And so your body tries to be always, I always tell my, my clients, your body tries to be in equilibrium. And when it isn't, um, you have more side effects. So you could have nausea, you could have vomiting, you could have taste um, problems, you can have dehydration. So, so to deal with an, uh, a weak immune system, you want to have good, wholesome foods that, that will boost the immune system, you know, high in, in phytochemicals, certainly, um, you know, beta carotene, vitamin E, vitamin C, as the doctor said, you know, we know that nutrition will um, reduce the risk for survival and for reoccurrence. And the dehydration issue there? Dehydration, uh, you know, whenever you undergo chemotherapy, um, you risk dehydration and you can't continue chemotherapy if patients are dehydrated. So um, it's very important for, for anybody undergoing chemotherapy to be hydrated so that they can make it through the cancer treatment. I imagine so many questions. By the way, continue to log on. Dr. Come in and I'm gonna ask real quickly, what are the, some of the traits of a great navigator? But go ahead, doctor. Um, the immunotherapy was a good segue to say, well, this is one of the third big treatment that we use in oncology now. We try to stimulate uh, to, because the immune system on a daily basis kills cancer cells in everyone else, everyone, every one of us. And uh, so if we can harness the immune system to kill the cancer cells, and that's an example of what we did with uh, Kathy. We changed her immune system with a cell of a donor to do an allogenic bromide another oh, own oh, cell. Yeah, too, too fast, too fast. We Change. changed the cells, uh, we changed her immune system, her bone marrow, so we took the cells of a donor that is compatible and we inject those cells in the blood and they go straight into the bone marrow. They develop a new sort of blood and then develop a new immune system that has the ability to cure the lymphoma. And that's what's exciting. So the future is to try to, do to, to, try to develop more of this cell therapy where we re-educate the immune system to fight the cancer. And this is something that is really exciting. There are some amazing data in uh, emerging trials as well. Big smile on your face, why? Well, because you're gonna have to invite me back in 20 years to see that it really worked, I guess. <laughs> I love that. Um, no, I'm thrilled. I mean, it's been nine years for me. I've never had a clean scan, and I just had my first clean scan the other day, so I'm, thr I'm thrilled beyond belief. I mean, life is all we want, and um, you know, I've had my questions over the years, although I felt confident, but you know, I'm thrilled. If it wasn't for Dr. Gua, you know, and his persistence and his brilliance to help me through this, I wouldn't be here. So I'm. We're thrilled for you. We're thank you. Here. Thank Definitely. you. Uh, real, yeah. quick, real quick, um, some of the three traits that are important for a great navigator. It's important for people to know that watching this show. Um, empathy. You empathy. Have empathy, listening, and being able just to. I want to say just being able to get that one-on-one -on -one connection with that particular patient. Mm -hmm. It isn't always easy, but the thing is, once you are able to go ahead and connect with that patient, you are with that patient basically from the time, from the beginning of their treatment, and you can go all the way to the end, being able to assist them with whatever needs that they have What's it done while for they're you there. Being able to do this? It has, it, it basically really has opened a lot a lot inside for me. I enjoy so much what I'm doing there with the American Cancer Society. It allows me to be able to go in, meet other people who have gone through different things or are going through different types of diagnosis that they may have. And just being able to know that each day there is a familiar face that when they come into the hospital that they will be able to see knowing that someone is there to give them that little more information or assist them with any sort of needs that we have. I mean, any sort of needs they may have. We all have needs. And everyone has needs. You yeah. know, as a patient... A few I, seconds. We're going to keep talking off the air, but go ahead. Um, as a patient, I, I can honestly say that the, you really feel this connection with anybody who's willing to listen. Yeah. Because, By the way, I'm, I'm going to cut you off right there. Yeah. We'll keep talking off the air. I need to say this to you. You have helped more people in the last half hour than you know of. I just want to say that to you. Oh. Now just keep talking. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thanks for watching. Now let's continue the conversation about this and other important topics and issues on Facebook. Visit my page at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, PhD. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation.
celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. And 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, Health First New Jersey, PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. Roche. Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868. The Russell Berry Foundation. New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group. Auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship. And by Investors Bank. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey, The Star Ledger, and NJ.com, Everything Jersey. And by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. For 17 years, the Russell Berry Foundation has recognized unsung heroes in New Jersey who have done extraordinary things for others. If you know a New Jersey resident whose selfless or heroic actions make them worthy of recognition, you can nominate them to receive the Russell Berry Making a Difference Award. With annual cash prizes of up to $50,000, this award can make a significant difference for a very deserving person. Nominations are accepted online.